Okay, hey guys, um, I uh, need to go over some concepts with you, don't I? I said I'd do that in the last video. So, um, one of the cool things that I, I thought of in, you know, in making the station is uh, the idea that you could take a pressure plate and you can put it at the bottom of a cartridge and you can use that as an indicator light um, to tell you when the cartridge is empty. Uh, the thing is that uh, it, it's not really a useful tool. It's it's kind of a, a dumb, dumb little quirk that I, I well, at least I had thought it was a dumb little quirk when I was uh, making it. But you know, I didn't really think about what what it can be used for and what uh, uses you know what what would make it so useful if I could use it. So, um, thinking thinking about it a little bit, uh, I thought to myself, well. Here's the thing. If I have a pressure plate there, I'm actually sending a signal. And a signal, you know, that's that opens up the whole world of redstone. I could I could do almost whatever I want uh because, you know, it's sending out a signal. So, I could do whatever I want when a cartridge is empty. So, what that told me was that I could take a a cartridge that's 20 20 blocks high that can fit, you know, a gazillion carts in it. And I can spread it out vertically and split it up into, into uh, you know, like four different cart cartridges of five high. I'm pretty sure it doesn't convert properly, but we'll we'll ignore that for now. I could take, I could turn it into four cartridges of five high, and you know, merely just check to see if one cartridge is empty, and if the other cart, if the cartridge is is, is um, completely uh, empty then uh when uh when we call a cart that booster that goes to to pick up a cart will just go to the next the next cartridge because we have that pressure plate there and then uh you you do have a problem uh when you when you do this trick uh that you're not able to to see um wait wait, wait. you you're not able to pick up only one cart at a time because you're missing that half step but the way that we resolve that is we put a glass block uh, all the way down except for one one space, and that that's how I resolved it at least, and it, it worked out perfectly. It uh, it stopped collecting two carts instead of uh, and instead of collecting two carts, it only collected one, which is what we want. So it was a, a great solution, and um, I mean, you know, you sacrifice the half block, which it does, which I'll admit does look good, but I mean, you're not actually seeing the cartridge when you're coming into the station. At least for this station, we won't. And I mean, any station you can really just you know cover up your your design, and uh, and nobody ever will see it. But um, and if you're following along and actually looking at the video, you can see that I I did quite the number on this station. It's it's quite the interesting compilation of of uh, different techniques, especially going outside and building into the sky. It's apparently one of the techniques I liked back then. Uh, another change that I wanted to address was uh, I'm not going to make redstone, uh, I'm not going to put it on its own floor. Instead of, uh, and redstone is going to have its own separate area. Um, I We need that. We can't, we can't sacrifice organization because uh, when debugging time comes around, you know it's it's really going to be a pain in the ass if we don't have proper uh, proper redstone a proper redstone area and everything that we need in the redstone area. Um, but instead of making it more vertically orientated so that we have a whole another floor for redstone, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually partition one of the uh, both of the current floors. Uh, so we're only going to have two floors. We're only going to have two floors of, uh, of probably about eight high, maybe a little bit higher. Um, and in the two floors, uh, we're going to have a little side partition. So it is going to be that. That's why it's so lengthy uh, and such such so high on length and so high on width is because um, in the dimensions that I gave in the last episode, I'm trying to account for that redstone room, and I'm also trying to account for a couple other things. Okay, so we are currently at four minutes. Okay, so I can go over another concept. Um, the next concept I wanted to explain 
was the use of uh, the smart booster. This is probably one of the most important important concepts. So if you take away one thing from this video, it should be this: uh, you can make a booster that that um, propels you, that self resetting and propels you uh, six thousand blocks without the need of another booster. Now we can take this information and we can say, uh, okay, lovely. What the hell does that mean? Well, that means that if we don't need any any other boosters on the line, then multiple users can be on the same line. So that makes uh, having having one you know having multiple users writing the same uh, line at the same time a feasible idea. Uh, before it was kind of a wacky idea because. Um, it would take so much iron to just recreate these lines, you know, your main track. I mean, the main track alone takes so much iron, but imagine imagine adding two or three more lines to that just to uh, allow multiple users writing the system at the same time. So uh, it also means that uh, you won't, you'll save iron uh, uh, booster-wise. You're, you're not going to be needing so many boosters um, so many boosters on the actual main line, which means that those boosters can be saved and can be used elsewhere. Uh, that iron, I mean. Um, I need to go put carts away. So that that is an, a very important concept. Uh, I'll show you how to build the the booster. It it works quite ingeniously. It takes a clock that uh, counts to five, and um, it has a double-ended booster that propels it to pretty much extreme you know velocity so you, you always you get a consistent boost every time which is probably the hardest thing to to have come up with in the in this concept um, the clock allows it to to give it a consistent boost every time and it uh, it tends to tends to propel you extreme distances um, there's also a 500 uh, 500 block uh, distance propulsion for um, carts that are empty, but we're not really going to use that because I, I think that's dangerous. Five five hundred blocks is a little bit uh, a little bit small. We if we want to, you know, imagine imagine making stations every five hundred blocks. That's uh, that's kind of iffy. Um, now between two thousand and six thousand, on the other hand, that's kind of you know that's kind of awesome. You know, making one station every two thousand blocks is is freaking great. Um, I need to make another chest. So if you have if you don't know already, we're trying to dismantle the station uh, so that we can refurbish it. There's a couple chests over here. Uh, this is one of my already existing stations. It was pretty poorly built, and uh, well, it wasn't poorly built. It was just uh, it was so early on when I was building that. You know, I wanted to move on to the next the next station to make that one better than this one, and I'd come up with so many different solutions to so many different problems that I was, you know, really really excited that I didn't, you know, spend so much time on this one, you know, as much as I should have at least. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put redstone, we're gonna make a little redstone gate around our shit. Okay, so we are now at eight minutes. Um. I don't think I have time to explain any more concepts to you. Uh, in the next episode, we can go over a couple of concepts, and that that's fine. Um, I really only have one or two more that I need to, to go over. So I will see you guys in the next episode, and we will continue dismantling the station while I talk, and you will be completely confused. So I'll see you guys in the next video.